Good morning, my name is Shovik Banik. My name is Eshel Chardon. My name is Sergi Monso, and we're going to be here today presenting the Under Armour case. Under Armour was first founded in 1996 by Kevin Plank, who was a football player at the University of Maryland. The company first made its name on its innovative and new sweat wicking technology that was used by many high school football players as undergarments during high heat practices. Um, over the course of our presentation, we're going to give us give you guys an in-depth analysis on the marketing mix and uh, marketing plan for Under Armour. Uh, meanwhile, the mission statement is to make all athletes better through passion, design, and the relentless pursuit of innovation. And here we have um, a picture of the Under Armour facility in Baltimore, Maryland today, and the first Under Armour undershirts that were first released to high school football players. For our switch to situational analysis, I first took a look at some of the assets and some of the resources that Under Armour currently has. They have a really highly integrated apparel technology system that allows them to take advantage of the sweat and the resistance of, of, of apparel. They have a very personalized and local strategy by taking advantage of high school state football teams and high school, high school state football packs. And they also have a very trendy and emotional advertising slogan, such as I will what I want and protect this house, which really endears with the young generation. Moreover, they also utilize a patient sponsorship and licensing strategy, which we will talk about a bit later on. And they also have a very strong business relationship with the National Football League and specifically with the Baltimore Ravens, who are an NFL team in Baltimore. And this picture right here is a, a look at some of the recent sponsors and licensors for Under Armour who represent the band. And uh, some of the most prominent athletes are Stephen Curry, Cam Newton, who plays football, Jordan Spieth, a golfer, Misty Copeland, who is a ballerina and dancer, Clayton Kershaw, a famous baseball pitcher, Carey Price, an excellent hockey player, Tom Brady, a professional football player who just happened to win the Super Bowl, and Lindsey Vaughn, a um, award-winning Olympic skier. Like we need to do it like super. The the customers that mainly buy from uh, Under Armour are male, female, and youth athletes. These are typically people from the middle and upper middle class, and also have heavy high intensity trainers and instructors. Um, are very big on Under Armour gears just because of their advanced technology. And here we have a couple pictures of some of the Under Armour's bright young stars and um, adults running around in the city playgrounds. The primary competitors for Under Armour today are Nike and Adidas and Puma. Um, specifically, I want to emphasize Nike because Nike is the largest or the most global uh the highest sales in all of america when it comes to uh shoe sales and right here we have a picture of lebron james who is nike's biggest sponsor he recently signed a lifetime agreement with them and stephen curry who is a the lifetime sponsor for under armor so these two athletes are always going to be competing with each other on the court but in, a, in the on the business side of things it's always going to be between under armor and nike in addition here, I also have some New Balance running shoes or soccer shoes. And, and, and this is from the English Premier League, the Tottenham Hotspur, who is a Premier League soccer club who is sponsored by Under Armour and a competitor of Under Armour, New Balance, which is the Liverpool football team right here. Government regulations have recently taken a prominent role when it comes to the apparel merchandising industry. And this all has to do with the habits of uh, outsourcing this work to China. Um, and based on this rules and based on the recent sanctions that's been imposed upon Nike, uh, Under Armour recently posted this uh, regarding forced labor. Under Armour will not purchase products or components thereof from suppliers that use forced labor, whether in the form of prison labor, indentured labor, or bonded labor, or otherwise, or permit their suppliers to do so. And then when it comes to child labor, Under Armour recently came out with this statement after um, Pakistan and Nike were, were questioned of producing um, World Cup soccer balls utilizing uh, young children, Under Armour stated, we will not purchase products or components 
therefore manufactured by persons younger than 15 years of age or younger than the age of completing compulsory education in the county in the country of manufacture where age is higher than 15. The Lighthouse is a new design that was introduced by Kevin Plank last year, and it's going to be the new Manufacturing and Innovation Center going to be located in Baltimore, Maryland. An interesting thing is um, in that center, they have signs and signage on the wall, pretty much taking shots and jabs at Nike's headquarters, which are located in Beaverton, Oregon. And so this $35,000 square foot um, space will be a lab for designers and engineers and production specialists, and it will allow for more tests to be done for some of the <clears throat> Under Armour's highest profile athletes. And so this lighthouse will also keep American jobs here in stateside and also increase the economy for uh, the, the, the Under Armour's home city of Baltimore, Maryland. And when it comes to the market trends for Under Armour, they're definitely trending upward in the right, upwards in the right direction. Footwear today accounts for nearly 30% of Under Armour's evaluation, and that's expected to grow exponentially just because of Steph Curry's um, basketball shoe line, which we'll talk about a bit later. In addition, the company will attack in new international markets such as China, and uh, which has been pushed by the government of China as well, uh, because China is trying to increase its sports leagues and its professional sports um, associations in the country. And last but not least, this company, uh, Under Armour, will be engaged in strategic partnerships with Kohl's, who specializes in women's uh, department wear gear and can be able to penetrate a new target market, and also through technology apps such as the Health Box, uh, which is another company that Under Armour is looking to get in the fit technology industry. So next we're going to talk about the SWOT analysis, we're going to talk about the internal factors, strengths and weaknesses of Under Armour, and then we're going to uh, finish with the external factors, the opportunities, and threats. Uh, first, we're going to talk about Under Armour strength. Under Armour has uh, three main strengths that made them the company they are today and helped them uh, to, be, to become one of the biggest uh, sports brand in the U.S. and in the world in general. So the first strength is the broad product portfolio. Under Armour started with only compression shirts for football. And with the years, they develop uh, a variety of apparel, footwear, and accessories for men, women, and children. The second strength uh, of Under Armour is the strong financial performance. Under Armour has positively showed strong financial performance in recent years. Uh, which helped them become the most, uh, the second biggest sports brand in the U.S. Uh, the last strength we're going to talk about is the multi-channel approach. Under Armour sells its product through various channels such as wholesale, retail, and online. So let's move to Under Armour main weakness. Under Armour depends heavily on third-party suppliers and manufacturers outside of the U.S. 63% of Under Armour products are manufactured in China, Jordan, Vietnam, and Indonesia. Under Armour has a little control over the quality of the product uh, they manufactured in, outside of the U.S. because it depends on uh, outside suppliers that they don't really see face-to-face -face on a daily basis. So for the first opportunity Under Armour has is the uh, rising popularity of e-commerce. Uh, e-commerce sales have been uh, growing in fast pace in recent years and with them the online retail sales as well. Under Armour uh, depends heavily on e-commerce sales, online sales, uh, etc. Uh, the second one is the positive outlook of, for the athletic footwear market in the, in the U.S. The athletic footwear market in the U.S. has been showing an increase in sales in recent years, 7.5% from 2014 to 2015. The last opportunity uh, Under Armour possess is the growing U.S. apparel market. Uh, the U.S. apparel market is in a fast-paced grow, uh, growth in recent years as well. Okay, so the next one is threats. Intense competition. 
Under Armour deals with several strong companies which possess uh, greater resources and experience such as Nike, Adidas, and Puma. Counterfeit goods. Counterfeit goods are imitations of products. It's basically fake products. This phenomenon has become uh, global in recent times and it threatens to um, damage uh, Under Armour margins and profits. The third one would be low barriers to entry. Um, the apparel industry does not have a lot of uh, requirements for new companies to enter. This leads to a harder competition for Under Armour in the US and outside of it. The, the last one is riding, rising labor uh, wages in the US. The minimum wage has increased consistently in uh, recent years, and in a couple states, it is even higher than the federal requirements. This threaten, thre threatens as well to hurt uh, the company's margin, margins. In order to talk about Under Armour goals and objectives, we need to go back to Under Armour mission statement. Their mission statement says, uh, we want to make uh, all athletes better through passion, design, and the relentless pursuit of innovation. In order to make that mission statement true, Under Armour created themselves a company B goal, which is to eventually become the world's biggest sport brand. And they also have a long-term financial goal, which is to increase long-term net revenues. Their objectives, they're gonna help their, them uh, reaching their goals are uh, to build a fitness community while adapting a patient sponsorship strategy. Under Armour is trying to build a fitness community with four new uh, apps on the App Store for, uh, uh, for Samsung and for iPhone as well. Uh, they also adapting a patient sponsorship strategy. They're trying to uh, sign athletes that are not yet in their prime. They do a lot of research for uh, athletes and how they can perform in the next five to 10 years. And they choose very wisely the athletes that they want to sign in, such as Steph Curry that they sign in way before he became the biggest player in the NBA. Uh, Under Armour financial objective is to target uh, $7.5 billion net revenue by 2018, which is 142% increase from $3.1 billion in net revenues in 2014. So we're going to talk about marketing strategies now. Um, Under Armour started with around 300,000 um, K of budget. Um, they started pretty simple just giving away free samples to college athletes. Um, the word of mouth was their most important marketing strategy at, at the beginning, since they did not have a lot of money. Um, that led to the attraction of more consumers and the strengthening of the brand's name. And then they, it also helped a lot, the free samples to athletes, since they got direct feedback so they could improve their products. Um, and just make modifications in order to satisfy the college athletes and high school athletes at the beginning. And here we have one of the first um, compression shirts that Under Armour made. Once the company started growing up, um, their marketing strategies also started to change. So since they have more, since they had more economic power, um, athletes started to wear Under Armour apparel. Um, in public so people could look at it and and just identify the athlete with the with the brand and then they also started to sponsor um, professional teams and players such as as we said Stephen Curry, um, Andy Murray, um, the Tottenham Spurs from the uh, Premier League so that also helped um, the brand to get to get known in the in the sports world and then one of the most important um, things about Under Armour is that they started advertising in the Super Bowl, um, the most expensive ad that you can you can spend on in the world. Actually, um, this year's most expensive Super Bowl ad was about five million dollars. And then now for the marketing mix, the four P's we have: product, um, placement promotion and price. Um, for the product we have 
Under Armour mainly sells sports apparel, going from compression shirts to any kind of footwear. Their logo is almost in every product, and their apparel is for any weather conditions. So right here we have some soccer cleats, and um, on the on the picture on the right, we have on the left a compression shirt, um, just some sport shorts, and, and a jacket. And for plays, um, Under Armour sells its products through official Under Armour stores, authorized stores, and also online. Um, so they also give importance to the to the e-commerce. Um, on the right, you can see a picture of Under Armour, and on the left, we could see one of these authorized stores, um, Dick Sporting Goods, and then a truck with the um, logo of Under Armour, of the slogan actually, protect this house. And last but not least, we have price and placement. Um, for the price, Under Armour's price range is huge since they have a wide variety of products for different purposes. The most expensive product they sell is a $1,500 jacket, while the cheapest is a $6 headband. For placement, um, that's one of the most important things for Under Armour since they are starting to get more known in the in the market. So sponsorships are very important for them. We can see that they just signed a a deal with UCLA, and on the right we could see the Tottenham um, Spurs again. And then they also um, they also important in the TV shows, video games, um, Super Bowl, as we said. And then also in the high school and the college all america they sponsor that too in order to help the student athletes have a great experience when they when they get their reward for the future of under armor um, all they really need to do, to do is make sure that they understand their strengths and weaknesses quite well um, their sweat wicking and innovative technology adheres to many young athletes and fitness trainers today so as long as they approach that, they should be able to benefit much more in the future. In addition to that, they must focus on their basketball shoe market. And this all has to do with Stephen Curry, who currently is the highest paid, uh, highest paid player on Under Armour's roster, but most importantly considered by many to be the best basketball in the world. And Under Armour needs to also increase the prices of their shoes. These are the Curry 2 Lows, which were just released earlier, late last year. The starting price for these shoes was $148. Um, but many business analysts believe that the price of these shoes needs to be at least $190 or even more than $200, just because of the brand, but also because of the fact that these are Stephen Curry shoes, and Stephen Curry is just so present in today's mainstream media. We also think that they should um, invest a little bit more money in this in soccer since their main guys um, that they sponsor they're not really known um, we have Memphis Depay um, a player who signed for Manchester United two years ago but recently moved to a lower lower division in in France in France sorry and then we have um, Granit Xhaka a player that plays for Arsenal but um, he's not a He's not really a star in the soccer market. So what we're missing from Under Armour is a, like a an icon, like a huge player that they need to sponsor. Like we're not we don't want like Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo since they have bigger deals with other brands. But there are also like other players that could do this role, like Sergio Aguero or uh, that he he's sponsored by Puma actually. Um, or Sex Fabregas that used to play at Barcelona and now he's playing for Chelsea, also sponsored by Puma. So we think that they should invest a little bit more money in soccer and also sponsor like other teams um, other than players. So yeah, that's, that's what we think about soccer. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation today about Under Armour and we hope you guys learned a bit more about the future of the company.